Hi, I'm Scott with Off Grid Whiskey and Sunshine. Today, I'm going to show you how to start your steel chainsaw. Okay, I see a lot of videos online, people talking about how to start a chainsaw, how not to start a chainsaw. I've seen some really good information, I've seen some really bad information, and I've seen some that was close, but not quite there. My rooster says hello. It's a beautiful spring day here in the woods of Maine. As you can see, the trees are budding. That means it's firewood season. Time to get that wood cut to burn next winter. The saw I'm going to be using today to show you how to start a steel is this little steel MS-180. I'm using that for no particular reason, except that it's new and it still has the old style choke setup. Okay, folks, so what I've got here is three different saws. For the most part, these three saws are going to cover the really the two different types of ignition switches and the different ways that you'll start and stop each kind of saw. Uh, you'll notice that this little MS-180 has a four-position switch. Where this uh, MS-261 only has a two, basically it has a two position switch, and it defaults to run. You have to push it up to shut it off, and then it defaults back to run. And then this big old 261 has the exact same kind of switch that the MS-180 still has to this day. So I guess, I don't know, that could be because... The 261 is an M-Tronic. I don't know, maybe maybe the M-Tronic version of the 180 has the same button. I'm not sure. But for right now, we're going to go with the MS-180. That's got the most common switch on it. And it's fairly easy to remember. Now, this is just a small saw. Great saw for a homeowner. But it gets left outside a lot. Now, I'm probably shooting myself in the foot here because I haven't started this saw in quite a while and it's been left outside in the rain and the heat and everything else. I see a lot of people complaining about their steels flooding on cold start. Some of that can be because the tank has built up pressure. If you watch, you want to be really careful. Sometimes you get, that one's pretty good. That one didn't pop. But a lot of times these things will build pressure up in the fuel tank. And as soon as you go to crank it over, the pulse line will send that that little bit of pressure to the carburetor and open that diaphragm and it's going to squirt that pressurized gas right into your, into your motor and it's going to flood your saw. Steel's been working on the problem. There's several issues going on with it. It's actually kind of unsafe because it can blow gas all over yourself. Always check that first, especially if the saw has been out in the hot sun. So now we know that that isn't a problem with a saw. So what we're going to do is, right now, this saw is in the off position. So we're gonna bring it down all the way to the bottom and we're gonna do that while holding in on the throttle. So you squeeze the throttle and go all the way to the bottom and let off. You'll notice that the throttle is now about halfway open. So the throttle is halfway open and it's on full choke. So now you wanna set your chain break. Now there are several different ways to safely start a chainsaw without getting cut. Steel, OSHA, a lot of people, they'd like to see you start them on the ground and have your foot through this loop. I don't do it like that. I start the saw in my left hand, use my right hand to crank it with the chain brake on. Very aware of my surroundings. The chain's not going to run because the chain brake's on, so it's not a problem. It's still OSHA approved. They just don't like it as much. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to crank it until it burps or until we hear it pop. I don't know how many cranks that's going to take, so bear with me. There's one, two, third crank. Now, without touching the throttle, I'm going to bump this up one notch. What's that done is it's, it's set it to half choke, and the throttle is still at half throttle. So when I start it, it's going to rev up. Chain isn't going to spin because, again, the chain brake is on. Should start the first pull. Nope. There you go. Bump that back down. Now you're at idle speed. Take the chain off. You're ready to go. It's as simple as that. When you're 
You want to shut it off? So it shuts right off. So once again, on a cold start, you hold the throttle, go all the way to the choke position, crank it till it burps, go up one notch, crank it till it starts, touching the throttle puts it back to idle so it's not an half throttle anymore, then you're ready to go. Unlock your chain brake and you're in business. That's pretty much it. Not very hard, but never, ever, ever, when you've got the saw on choke and you crank it, once it burps, you want to immediately take it off choke. If you keep cranking it, you will flood your saw. So you only want to have the choke on until it's fired. Then you want to turn it off to half choke, one notch up. That should match what Steel says in their book. There are other ways to start it. Like I said, you can start it on the ground. You can start it by holding it between your legs. Everything with the chain brake on. That's pretty much it. These big saws start just like this little saw does. They all start just the same. Steel's pretty consistent. This one doesn't have a primer bulb or a decompressor or anything. It's kind of no frills. That's just the way it works. So good luck to you out there and be safe. And I hope that answers some of your questions about how to start a steel chainsaw. Thanks.